everyone. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. Good morning, Bob. Actually, it's afternoon for you, right? It's good to see you. Fantastic. We're going to start here in just a minute. I'm going to give people a couple of minutes to get on. We're going to talk today about prepping for a gig. But while we're waiting, let's just uh, talk about something or do something else. I've got my guitar with me today. This is a BR-73 Blue Ridge solid spruce top. Let's see, the tuner that I'm using is a Unitune by TC Electronic. Works really good. Let me check my tuning. Ah, a little bit sharp there. That's sharp too, that's interesting. I tuned up just a little while ago. Could be the humidity. Sometimes humidity affects tuning. Humidity expands the fretboard and the wood in your guitar, if you've got a wood guitar. Which I'd imagine most people do have wood in their guitar, and that's really important. There we go. Also, I'm going to be using today a capo. This is a Shub Capo. I don't get paid telling you any of this from the tuner or the, the Shub company. I just, I just like this Capo a lot. It's a fantastic Capo. I don't get sponsored by anybody. And uh, the reason is because <laughs> I haven't taken any sponsorships, especially the ones that say, hey, will you promote our clothes or our games, things like that. It's like, nah, 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 nah. I don't think I'm going to do that. All right, we're going to get started here in just a moment. We've been online for a couple minutes now, so let's just get started. So the other day, not the other day, actually a couple of months ago, some friends of ours, uh, one friend of mine, he was laid up for a while because he had a really bad accident and he was in, in bed and his wife called me up and said, hey, would you come over and play your guitar for Hal, for Dennis. His name is Dennis. And he wasn't feeling too good because he had to stay home and he, he couldn't even sleep in his bed. He had to sleep in his chair and that kind of thing. And it was just, he was in an uncomfortable situation trying to heal from uh, a broken back. So I went over there and I played my guitar and I played a few songs. And uh, as I was playing, Dennis and his wife looked at each other and they looked at each other kind of interestingly. And they said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they're thinking, <laughs> so I said, what are you guys talking about? And uh, they said, would you play at our 50th wedding anniversary in July? And I said, sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. So they're going to have a, a get together and with their family and it's not going to be too big, but it's going to be fun. And I'm going to play a bunch of songs for them. So I've done this many times before. I've done a lot of gigs and, um, I asked them, what do you want me to play? Are there any specific songs you want me to play? And they said, well, you probably know what kind of music we like. I had played some 60s and 70s music. And I thought, okay, I'll just, I'll just pick some stuff. So this is, I'm going to go through some of the stuff that I picked. And you can tell me if you would pick something different. Now, um, 50th wedding anniversary for this couple. Uh, the wife, she, I played this song. Now, you don't know what this song is from this particular uh, arrangement. It goes like this. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. probably have never heard it that way before but I like to do that it's kind of a jazzy version of over the rainbow and and uh, she looked at me and she said well I played Dorothy in when I was in school in the Wizard of Oz and it would be wonderful if you could play that and I was like sure I'll play that here's another one this is a Beatles song 
uh, I like to play it on the fifth fret. You write down in the comments the kind of music you would like to hear if this was your party, your anniversary party. You know that one. You comes the sun. You comes the sun, and I say it's all right. Right. That's a that's a wonderful tune. Beatles. A lot of people love the Beatles. And uh, who's here? I see a David. Hello, David. <laughs> and Lisa. Hello, Lisa. I have to. My my stand for my camera is right in front of the comments. Let me move it. Can you still see me? Yes. There we go. Bob. I'd probably play You've Got a Friend, says Bob. You know what? That's on my list. <laughs> you can get th this gig book that I'm putting together. It's got 30 songs in it. 30 songs? 21 songs? I think it's 21 songs. It's 30 pages. Yes, I do have You've Got a Friend. I'll get to that in just a minute. Another one. Oh, this one by James Taylor is really good. I like this one. How sweet it is to be loved by you. You know that one? Really, really nice James Taylor tune. Uh, these songs can be found in my book, my Quail Studios Music and Lead Sheets book. Um, oh, here it is. You've got a friend right there. It's written by Carol King. And this is uh, a version that is based on James Taylor's version. So I don't use a pick on this one. That, that low E string was a little bit buzzy. There we go. When you're down and troubled and you need a helping hand. There you go. That's uh, You've Got a Friend. That I've got a video on that one too, how to play it. And there's tab in the book in case you want the tab. Oh, this is a great song. Take the capo off for this one. This is a uh, Neil Diamond song. Oops. I've got to practice. Where it began, I can't begin to know when. You know that one? Sweet Caroline. Right? Sweet Caroline. Great song. I think they'll like that one, too. <coughs> Let's see. Oh, this song is wonderful. This is by the Beatles. You know, I have a couple of Beatles songs in here because the Beatles have really good ones. And I play this one in E minor instead of F sharp. A little bit better for my voice. I give her all my love. That's all I do. So I have that one in my book, too. And I actually have two lead sheets for that one, E minor, the way I play it, without a key change, and then in F sharp minor, the way the Beatles play it, with the key change. So, um, you know, if you wanted to do that in a band situation, you can have both. This song is really, really good. Annie's Song by John Denver. <laughs> Fire and Rain. Bob says Fire and Rain by James Taylor. Yes, I agree. You know, I decided not to include Fire and Rain because of the message. I mean, if, I, if I'm only going to play for like an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half or something, I can't do all the songs that I absolutely love. I mean, Fire and Ma Rain is a wonderful song, but it's not necessarily a love song. You know, it's kind of a like you're gone now and that's, and, but, you know, it could be. I, I I will probably, actually, in my first draft of this gig list, I actually put Fire and Rain in there. And I'm going to take Fire and Rain with me, but I'm not planning on pl 
playing it unless somebody requests it. So, yeah, this one is Annie's song. I'm going to do it with a pick like this. Something like this. You fill up my senses like a night in a forest. I can't remember if I did this one on video or not. I think I did. I think I have a video on Annie's song. Oh, this one I do definitely have a video. You could do it with your fingers. But it's actually in the key of D, and I have it written out in the key of D in my book, and also in the key of C, uh, in case, you know, you don't want to do any bar chords. So if you need it in the key of D, then what you do is you put your capo on the second fret. Only you gotta, gotta make sure that your capo is working. There we go. I'm playing it in the key of C, but capo. Do you know what song it is? Elvis did this. Wise men say only fools rush in. Right? Or you could do it with a pick, like this. Something like that. I'll probably do it with my fingers, because I like it better that way. Let's see. What's the next song I have in my... Oh, this one's a really good one. I have a capo second fret on this one, too. Um, because it's in the key of B minor, but I wrote it out in A minor. This is a really good one. I love it. You remember me when the west wind moves upon the fields of Bali. Fields of Gold by Sting. Oh, I love that song. It's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Love it. Very good message for uh, somebody's anniversary. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. A lot of people like this song. Let's see. How's it go? Let's see. I'm trying to think of how I would do it as a solo. Jeff Buckley played this one. It's a Leonard Cohen song. It's called Hallelujah. Oh, this is how I started. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Hallelujah. So many people love that song. I really like it too. It's a, it's a really good song. Um, not sure. It's not really a love song, I don't think. This one is, though. I love this one. This is a Jason Mraz song. I've got a video on this one. I had a video on Hallelujah too. I played this one in G. Well, you done done me, and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. Yeah, I like to play it with bar chords. But you can play it with uh, just open position chords. Right? Jason Mraz, I'm Yours. Earlier 2000s, boy, I really love that song. I've got a video on that. It's got lots and lots of views. This is a really popular song. I put it on the capo on the second fret and play this one, I think. Let's see, i got to tighten that a little bit. No, that's not it. That's it. Why are there so many 
Songs about rainbows And what's on the other side So we're going to do that one too. Rainbow Connection. Oh, I love this one. Another Beatles song. Can you believe it? This one, I mean, you got to do a few Beatles songs. Something in the way she moves Attracts me like no other lover Right? That's a really, really great song. Something. And this one is an older song, and uh, kind of a jazzy tune. Um, a lot of people did this one, Frank Sinatra, I think. Someday, when I'm awfully low, oops, I messed it up. When the world is cold. So the way you look tonight, and uh, this version is really based on Michael Bublé's version. It has chords that are very similar to what he did, and so I really like that version. Oh, love this one. This isn't really a love song, but it's uh, it is a love song, but it's not like a love song between two lovers. love between another person. Let's see. I can't play this and talk at the same time. Would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? And I do have a video on that one, too, in case you were wondering. Oh, this is a great song. Let's see. I'm trying to think of how I played this. That's it. If I... I'm going to have to practice this one. You know what's really great about making videos about songs? Ones that I have played in the past and... This one I haven't played a ton. I did make a video on it, and I can't remember exactly how it goes. That's it. If I could save time in a bottle in a Bottle, Jim Croce. Really great song for a love song. Wonderful. Now this one, uh, this is, this next song is another Beatles song. Paul McCartney wrote it. Yesterday. Oh, C sharp minor, sorry. That's it. More like this. Yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay Now I put it in the key of D because I think he plays it in the key of F Yesterday Right, and it's And I think he plays it as a G chord Tuned down a whole step on his guitar, I believe If I, if I don't remember Paul, let's see, who people are talking. Let's see, Joseph Glasso. Hello, Hal and all from Rancho Cucamonga. Rancho Cucamonga, I've been there before. Dean, hello, Dean. First time I've seen you today. Yo. Paul Geary says, I always have to relearn songs. Sometimes I think it's me, but a lot of my friends, it happens to them also. <laughs> well, if you don't play a song, hello, Orion. Well, Orion Quest says hello. Hello. Thank you for... Uh, chiming in here. It's really great to see you. The same thing happens to me. If I haven't played a song for a long time, like a year or, you know, something like that, or if it's not one that I played over and over and over and over, I'll have to relearn it. And that's what's so great about my videos is that sometimes it's like, I can't remember how this, this song goes. 
like this one. When I played Sweet Caroline a little earlier in this video, um, you know, because you can play it in different chord. You know, you could start out on on G, where it began, or you could start out on C, where it began, depending on where you want your voice to be. So sometimes I played it in different keys for different people or for me. Uh, here's one I really love. Now that I've lost everything to you. Wild World, Cat Stevens. I love Wild World. It's not, you know, it's like you're leaving, but, uh, you know, I hope you'll be okay. That kind of a song. Uh, I put that one in because I just like it a lot. All right, there's only a couple more songs here. Oh, this one. One of my friends from high school, we were talking on the phone. This was years ago, like, gosh, a long time ago. And uh, he said, you don't know Wonderful Tonight? You don't, you don't know Wonderful Tonight? You've got to learn Wonderful Tonight. Here at Clapton. It's late in the evening She's wondering what clothes to wear Yeah, so I'm going to play that one too. That's a, that's a great song for a love song. This one here, let's see, is this the last song in my book? Or do I have another one? Okay, I got two more. This one uh, was written by Jimmy Webb. Uh, but I base it on Glenn Campbell's performance. It's called Wichita Lineman. Now, the beginning of it, it actually has, uh, I think it's a baritone guitar that has the melody and even the lead. And I don't have that. And it's only going to be me and my son, Levi. Maybe you've seen our videos, Levi and I playing together. Uh, we did And I Love Her together and a couple of other songs. Somebody else made a qu uh, uh, comment here, and Joseph says, I heard Paul McCartney say he forgot how to play songs at times and had to refresh his mind. Yes, it happens. Do you know, okay, Orion Quest says, Do you know Dance With Me by the Orleans? Orleans? Dance With Me. Um, no, not off the top of my head. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I've heard it. And uh, I'd have to work it out. So um, this one goes. I am a lineman for the county. And I drive the main road. Searching in the sun for. So I probably won't do that. That's the melody that comes out, you know. But uh, I might just go. For an intro. I am a lineman for the county. Or I might just start out like this. I am a lineman for the county. And I drive the main road. Now, I don't think this song is not in my book. I need to put it in my book, and I need to do a video on it. So that's going to that's gonna be coming up sometime. Last one. Always on my mind. Now, when you do a, v a v search of always on my mind, you get an Elvis version, and you get a Willie Nelson version, and I'm not sure it's because I like Elvis and I like Willie Nelson and I've listened to both of those. If that's why it comes up in my feed when I put in Always On My Mind or if those are the two most common or popular versions of this song. What do you think? Uh, does Is Elvis's version... You know, I listen to both of them and I'm not totally in love with... Uh, <laughs> Ryan Quest says, Willie Rules! I love Willie Nelson. I'll tell you why in just a second. Uh, and this is actually based more on uh, 
maybe I didn't love you. But you know what? Um, trigger rules. <laughs> okay. Yeah, trigger. Trigger is Willie's guitar. That's what he's talking about. Dean says trigger rules. So Willie Nelson, I remember when he first really got big, I was pretty young. You know, this was like 40 years ago or something like that. And I remember watching him on TV and thinking, this guy is old. <laughs> I mean, I've never heard of him before. And I had heard that he had been around quite a while and touring and doing all kinds of stuff. And somehow he got popular. One thing that's interesting about Willie Nelson is that when you listen to his or look at his discography, he sings with so many different people. He sang with Sinead O'Connor. He sang, I, I can't name them all off. You know what I mean? He would like do duets with people and uh, just all kinds of stuff like that. It's really interesting. So, yeah, Willie, I like Willie, you know, and also when I, about 1981 or 1982, I was asked to be in a band, a local band, um, when I was in Idaho going to school and, um, it was going to be just a summer gig. It was going to be like eight weeks or something like that. And they wanted to do jazz tunes and, and jazz standards and things like that and country music. It was an interesting mix. We are going to play at this bar down in Idaho Falls. And so I, I learned all this stuff and I learned a bunch of songs that Willie had on his Stardust album. And Stardust was one of those. And I really liked the way he did those uh, jazz standards. It was really great. Anyway, always on my mind, it starts out like this. Maybe I didn't love you Quite as often as I could have Maybe I didn't treat you Tried it quite as good as I could should have Gotta practice that one, don't I? That one is not in my book either, and I'm going. To, I'm actually prepping to do a video on that one. Hopefully, do that one soon. And Orion Quest asks, "What gauge strings do you play?" I use Diodario strings. I do not get paid from them to tell you this. I really like Diodario strings. I've tried all kinds of different strings. You know, Gibson strings, Martin strings, uh, and I know that sometimes I, I've heard that. There's not very many string manufacturers. There's only like five or something like that. And some people, you know, get strings and they put their own brand on it. But Diodario strings, for some reason, have been very solid for me over the years. And I use uh, 11s. I'm looking at my shelf right there. I can't see the numbers on them. I use 11s and I use 12s. I have 12s on this guitar right now. On some of the uh, past videos that I did, like the last three or four or five live videos using this guitar, I used 11s. Um, I can't see the numbers. I'm not going to do a search right now because it might mess up my internet. So uh, those are the strings that I use. Bronze wound, you know, not coated strings, 11s or 12s. And sometimes in the past I have used 13s when I want to tune down my guitar. Like if I want to tune it down a half step and leave it that way all night, I'll put 13s on it to bring the uh, tension up a little bit. Okay. Orion Quest says, first time I saw Willie was in the We Are the World vid. Ah, yes. D, D. Panker and I'd have difficulty in separating second and third finger of the left hand. Second and third finger. These right here? Can you give some tips? Beginner guitarist here. Okay. Second and third finger. I'm thinking, you know that second and third finger, this is finger number one, two, three, four, right? Because in piano, your thumb is finger number one, one, two, three, four, five. But in guitar, it's one, two, three, four, like that, because we don't number the thumb because it's on the back of the neck. So if you can give me a little, uh, make sure that we're talking about the same thing. <laughs> Do this, he says. Orion Quest says, do this. Um, let's see. Paul Geary says, change the world. Eric Clapton. Oh, yeah. Is that the name of it? Great acoustic song also. Yes, I've been working on that. 
a little bit. I haven't finished it. Ryan Quest, you have awesome tone. Thank you very much. You know, tone has a lot to do not just with strings, but it has a lot to do with the way you attack the string and how you hold your pick. So when you play your strings, right, it's important that you pluck this the right way. I studied for about a year classical guitar and really helped my finger picking. Also, when I play a pick, especially with this kind of stuff, not really super fast stuff, I use the rounded edge of my pick to get the kind of tone I want. Middle and ring finger. Okay, yeah, second, third finger, that's right. Here's my ring finger, you can see the ring on there. So second and third finger, you have trouble separating them. That's interesting. Positioning is everything as far as being able to uh, play and uh, practice, of course. But sometimes how you hold the guitar is really important. Now I'm going to face the camera straight on. You'll notice that my guitar is pointing out this way. It's like at a 45 or a 50 degree angle from my body. And then when I turn this way, I'm presenting the guitar right to the camera like that. And I'm actually facing that direction right there. So, you know, there's a difference of, of that much. So uh, a lot of times getting your guitar in the right position, and then when I play this kind of a chord, I bring it back across my body. So pay attention to your positioning. And I do have some videos when I talk about those kinds of things. Um, I think I even have a, a video talking about guitar positioning. Look it up. Uh, search it on my on my on my you know YouTube channel. Okay, let's see. Hello from Colombia, Andres Rod. Hello, Andres. Bienvenidos. Thank you for being here. Gracias a venir aquí con nosotros hoy. Okay, so that's all I have. That's what I have in my book. There are 21 songs. If you'd like to get this particular book with all of these songs in it, I will make it available to my supporters. Now, if you want to become a supporter, look in the description. If you sign up at Subscribestar, if you sign up at Patreon, or if you send me an email, lessonswithhal at gmail.com, I will uh, and then make some kind of a donation either at PayPal or Zelle. Then, uh, then I will send you this book along with my other book, Quail Studios Guitar and Lee Sheets. It's got like 300, over 300 pages and a bunch of songs in it. Um, and you can look in the, yeah, give me a thumbs up, everybody. Dean reminds me. Thank you, Dean, for uh, letting me know. Yes. So you can get my Quail Studios Music and Lead Sheets book with updates. It's not very expensive. Not very expensive at all. You get a killer deal. Okay, I might raise the, the price someday. Actually, I'm thinking of separating this book because it's getting so big and so many songs in it, over 100 songs that I'm going to maybe separate it into like 60s music, 70s music, 80s music, that kind of thing. Um, I don't have a lot of 80s, 90s, and 2000s in there. That's it's a lot of earlier stuff, but I do have a bunch of songs that I did play, that I used to play from the 80s and 90s. Maybe I should do more of those. What do you think? Write down the kind of music you like. All right, thanks for coming along, everybody. It's been great. Give me a thumbs up if you like what I do here and subscribe to this channel. Hey, we are over 100,000 subscribers. That is fantastic. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for being here. And we will talk to you later. I appreciate you being here. I'm gonna go hang out with some subscribers, some supporters. They know where to find me because I sent them out an email this morning, all of them. Um, I don't know how many hundreds there are, a couple hundred. We won't get that many people at the uh, at the hangout. I can guarantee that, but uh, we'll get a few people. And uh, I answer questions and teach a little bit sometimes, and just like here, but it's a little bit more personal, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, and we can talk back and forth. It's not just me talking to a screen and you writing text. We actually get to talk and see, and I get to see you play. Uh, it's on Rock Out Loud. All right, we'll talk to you later. I got to go. 
We'll see you later. Take care. Bye.